So it's good to be with everybody again. Um, this is a two-part series of Dispelling Fear with Knowledge. What, what kind of um, spurned this two-part series was a couple of things. One, patients asking me questions, fan, family members, and just myself looking at everything going on social media, the news. Um, and there are two major events. One was a physician who was, you could tell he was a little, emotion, a little emotionally disturbed by what he was seeing in, in New York because it's a lot of stuff going on up there. It's not, it's not good. And, um, but his point was, we don't know what's going on. It's not what you think it is. And so that just went viral. And so people started asking me, well, do we have any idea what's going on? You know, we, if you get intubated, are we just killing people? And just it caused a lot of anxiety and angst. The other thing was with just my own family members even calling me, talking with me, being worried about the, you know, what's going on in the grocery stores and not knowing, just not knowing, not having good. No, people don't trust the information they're getting. And so what I want to do is address some of the numbers. And I did that on the video from the other day, um, just how you can educate yourself about these numbers. And then uh, I want to talk about some of the new stuff. There's really cool stuff going. There's a lot of, there's a lot of communication between specialists around the world, um, from Italy, from EVMS in Virginia, from physicians who've been sick and are sharing their experience. Um, and so there's a lot of really great stuff going on. Knowledge is, is being expanded exponentially even faster than it usually is. You know, one thing people don't realize is that half of all medical knowledge becomes obsolete in five years and every 18 months, the knowledge base we have um, doubles. So that's an incredible amount of information to think about. If you also think about half of all, and this is according to Dr. Ioannis from PLOS, which is the world's biggest um, online medical journal, but half of all medical inflammation that is published is later found to be false. So when you have this whole stew of things and you throw in social media, regular media, you throw in a worldwide pandemic, it's hard for physicians and practitioners to keep this straight. And now the, um, the populace, lay persons are trying to keep this straight and that it just, it's causing a lot of anxiety. So what I want to do is talk about the medical aspect of things um, right now. And so what I'm going to do is actually um, share my screen here real quick. And what I want to do is talk about this information right here. So dispelling fear with knowledge. And that's what we're going to talk about. So I want to start <clears throat> with this uh, study from Dr. Giattioni in Italy. Now, when people talk about the information from over overseas, how it's not what you think, this disease is not what you think, this is actually the original published article from that. And I have actually, well, this will be attached below. And I've actually put the article right here for everybody who wants to look at it. And you can actually pull this up. And again, this will be attached. And it's a really interesting article with some interesting concepts. Um, he talks about the common pneumonias he was seeing with a type L and a type type H and talk about the difference between the type L and the type H. And so what I want to do is just briefly summarize that because ultimately what people are hearing out there is these two things. The um, type H is our typical type of um, ARDS or a person with bad lung infection. This is about 20 to 30% of the patients. So this is actually not the majority. This is the minority of people that are, and these are people who get in the hospital and make it to the intensive care unit. Okay. So this is a very special subsection of the population. This is not the average. And these, and so this type H is the, the typical type with high lung elastance, high lung weight. So basically what that means is the lungs get filled full of fluid. Um, and they get kind of tight. So eventually the patient's fatigued from breathing. And you can identify this on CT. This is the usual, the usual player. The type L is this unusual type, which is the majority of these cases where the lung has low elastance. So what that means is it's not hard to breathe even though the patient's oxygen levels are crashing. The lung weight is low, which means they're actually not having issues with um, fluid edema. And he talks about those two types and how to um, deal with them. So what people are seeing, what physicians are seeing, has actually already been described in the Italian research and literature. We actually already know about that. What I think is really cool is that how um, Dr. Marek at EVMS has taken this to the next level. Now, Dr. Marek, for those of you who remember the whole IV vitamin C being used for sepsis research that came out two years ago and was published in the American College of Chest Physicians, world breaking literally if you're if you have sepsis in the icu your survival rate can be increased by 80 percent by doing IV vitamin c that's that's dr dr merrick he's the head of the pulmonary critical care at evms a really brilliant guy and he actually put together a care guide for patients in going into the hospital and going to the icu and so that care guide is right here 
that will be attached below as well for anybody to pull up and look at. This is geared more towards medical personnel. So um, that's the caveat to that. But the thing I think that's really interesting is some of his data pulling things together for how can you prevent getting into the hospital? Vitamin C, zinc, melatonin, D. It's a lot of these integrative functional medicine concepts that we've been talking about for the last month or two that we put published in our COVID-19 survival guide. Literally one of the top critical care specialist publishers in the country is saying the same thing. And so what, my point of that is you're, you're seeing multiple people from multiple modalities sharing similar information and we're all talking. I mean, literally this is a document he put together and said, share with your friends, share with the ER physicians, share with the, the clinical care specialists. And it's interesting in this article, how he also talks about in the hospital, when someone comes in, they're actually doing an EV mask, doing ascorbic acid. They're doing anticoagulation, which here in Richmond is pretty much standard. We realize a lot of people with the lung disease, <clears throat> one of the things that's happening is, sorry, my allergies are bugging me. So if I'm clearing my throat a little more than usual, that's what that is. But it's actually they're using blood thinners because we're getting microclots in the lungs. And that's another reason, another special thing about this that's causing decreased blood flow and people to have low oxygen levels, even though it's not super hard for them to breathe. So he talks about how they're doing things in the hospital there. But it's interesting how the azithromycin, melatonin, zinc, magnesium, IV magnesium, a lot of things they're doing there would fall into the integrative functional medicine realm per se, things that um, functional medicine practitioners have been doing for a while. Um, and then he talks about if you have to, try to avoid at all cases, you see the red right there, to try to avoid intubation. Because what we know is if these people get intubated, the mortality is anywhere from 50 to 90%. The gist is if you get intubated, it's, it's um, the likelihood of survival is pretty low. So you want that to be the last thing. But it's interesting how they're looking at IL-6 levels. You know, if you look at number 18, looking at troponins for heart attacks, neutrophil counts. But IL-6, there was a local physician, local um, vascular surgeon here in um, Richmond, Dr. Brown. I'm actually going to attach that, his, his um, YouTube video below as well. He got COVID-19 coming back, bringing his daughter back from college got hospitalized at a local hospital and they were doing all these, they were doing a lot of these things here, having people lay prone on their stomach. Um, and they ended up using an IL-6 um, um, biologic on him. And that made all the difference in the world. And he talks about his experience and how the drug was pretty much miraculous. And so my point is we're all sharing information and the, typically it takes 15 years for medical information to become standard of care. And what you all are seeing is you're seeing that, explode you're seeing you're sharing information and so that's part of the the anxiety and angst with all this going on um these are the key points here to dr Ma, um, malik's work i think the key points to me is that about he says 50 for 60 percent of the world are going to get this the numbers have been 70 80 percent but just as this is a this is the real deal this is a big thing if you use an 80 percent number that means and you use 0.1 percent as your mortality rate which is typical for flu so if we say this is just like the flu which it's not but if we say that that's still 250,000 americans dying from this disease so we all need to be vigilant <clears throat> do the best we can to boost our immune systems it's interesting you know key point five he talks about using c zinc quercetin d as key nutrients to use in the hospital to treat this so my point is that these are things we probably should be doing before we get to the hospital Take your D now, take your zinc, take your C. Um, in the survival guide I put together, I actually have dosing of zinc based on age because one of the interesting things is as you get older, you're more prone to zinc deficiency. Quercetin acts like hydroxychloroquine for you, those of you who have heard about that. That is actually a zinc ionophore. Um, it, maybe that's how ivermectin works. That's, that's something that was published this past week. Point is, is that we're sharing this information this is not special knowledge that only a few people have that, we're, that they're, that's being held from the population as a whole. This is stuff that people are sharing across the world, from Italy to Virginia, all over the place. And physicians are already implementing this in intensive care units and hospitals in the country. Um, that just brings me back to some of my original points about people finding reliable, dependable sources of information, using those, and that's what you kind of um, trust in. Um, and so again, I'm, I'm going to make that point find a few key sources, you know, three or four at most that you're going to look at. Um, you might use some other sources, but I would just say stick with those for information or even don't look at social media news feeds. Those by themselves increase your risk for anxiety. In the um, COVID-19 survival guide that you can dial download from my website, I talk about the key things like social distancing, wearing a mask. You're going to see that become the standard of care for at least the foreseeable future. If I sneeze in a room, 
and water droplets are spread 29 feet, or not water droplets, but aerosolized droplets are spread 29 feet. You know, I need, I need a an N95 mask. You need one too. You're going to see that being the standard soon. Um, so I kind of walk through some of those things as well as immune boosting stuff and additional nutritionals just so you can take charge of what's going on and have a little more ease with everything. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please share this with family and friends. The more that reliable information gets out there, I think the more it's going to help our anxiety. I'll continue to put these updates out there. If there's something you want to hear about, or you have a question, you can just post those um, either on YouTube, um, Vimeo, if that's possible, social media. And that's how I'm getting some of the questions. If you have articles or things you th would like me to look at, put them there as well. Um, that's how I'm, one of the ways I'm keeping up to date is people are, I'm using my hordes of patients as my researchers as well, to a certain extent, um, which means I'm getting a lot of information I've already seen, but also means it's keeping me, personally, I'm keeping at the tip of the spear as far as what's going on. And I'm hopefully giving you all reliable, dependable information. Um, take care. Um, again, stay safe, be well, find reliable information, stay calm. We were going to get through this together. It's just going to take a little bit of time. Um, Y'all enjoy the rest of your weekend and take care.